The European Commission has forecast that next year, Greece's debt will be almost twice the size of its economy. The Greek government has to be looking for ways to cut costs and to boost revenue. One of its advisors, hedge fund manager Hans Humes, he's president of Greylock Capital, is on the steering committee for Greece. Uh, and uh, on the creditor committee there, Hans, welcome to In Business. Uh, thanks, Margaret. Happy to be mm -hmm. here. So, Hans, when you were last on with us, you were saying you found some possible opportunity uh, on the horizon in terms of buying into Greek debt. Have you done that yet? Um, yeah, we've actually um, taken advantage of a number of uh, sales that have happened going into year end from some of the portfolios uh, in Europe. Um, it's, I think, as I mentioned the last time I was, I was on with you, um, a lot of large firms will try to clean up the balance sheet and get rid of things that people will, will see and see as danger signs. So there's been a lot of selling of Spanish, Portuguese, um, Greek, uh, Italian corporate bonds and sovereign bonds. Um, and we, we've been stepping in and taking some positions there. Now, are these uh, forced sales by banks? I'm not sure that you could say forced sales. Um, what, what really happens is a large institution will look at it and recognize that the market cap in, term, in terms of their equity valuation will probably suffer considerably if people look through and see that they've got large holdings. I mean, you were just talking about MF Global. What took them down? It's their European debt holdings. So in, investors can get very skittish. And if they see that a large institution has big holdings of European debt, the damage to the institution in terms of their equity valuation will be more than what they might lose on their holdings of the peripheral country debt. So there's actually a rational economic incentive for them to sell the European bonds below what the intrinsic value of those bonds are. And I guess what firms like ours do is, is provide, in, in effect, a clearing mechanism. If somebody needs to sell, you've got to have somebody who, who can buy. And quite honestly, um, I think we are at kind of a tricky point with Europe, but the valuations in many situations are, are actually getting pretty attractive. So you're in a place where you do feel comfortable buying Italian debt and buying Greek debt. Uh, on a case-by-case case case basis, uh, uh, Greek debt is the long end. The uh, Greek, Greek 40s are trading uh, lower today than they've ever traded before. Um, I think the offer side of the market is 23 cents in the dollar. Um, I think that any restructuring that will happen, a worst case may be close to this valuation. So there's some opportunity to, to, to get a reasonable return if you're a secondary market buyer. Um, I'm not saying the process is going to be simple, but my, from my vantage point, I think that there are enough elements there and there's enough pressure there to actually come to a deal. Well, we do know that the, at least the Greek finance ministry will be calling for meetings next week. Uh, is there something we should be expecting that could influence that trade? It's tough to tell. Um, I, I think if you take a look at the, uh, the media coverage, um, especially inside Greece, you'll, you'll get a sense of the real debate on both sides. Um, what's really striking is you've got the Greek banks um, and the Greek government really at loggerheads about the private sector involvement in a restructuring, and it, it stands to reason. The government wants to take the debt load off. Uh, the banks themselves wanna, don't want to make sure that they come out with some kind of resolution on their holdings of their own country's debt. And I think that extends to all the other European banks as well. They're trying to figure out a way to minimize the hit that they'll get on the balance sheet if they hold the bonds. Um, but there's no question that they're going to have to be a, a series of further dialogues. I'm, I'm confident, I'm pretty sure, that there's been on the ongoing discussions by telephone, face-to-face -face meetings between all the relevant parties in this. And obviously, I mean, I was very, very involved in Argentina, um, right. and that was a very complicated situation. I think that this is going to be that much more complicated with the involvement of the ECB, the EU, the IMF, uh, the creditors, and obviously the Greek government. Now, uh, Bloomberg is reporting this morning that uh, EU leaders are dropping their demands that, that the private sector uh, basically also take haircuts uh, to share in the cost of the bailout. Um, and that had been a key point 
for many market participants. Um, what does this signify to you? Is this a real shift in strategy? Um, you know, I, I, I've got to be a little cynical in my, my response here. Um, I mean, one thing is the public statements from one week to another seem to change. And, and I wasn't sure that Merkel's comments that people were uh, grabbing onto were as clear cut as maybe they were hoping they were. And moreover, what they were talking about was actually going back to the IMF um, guidelines. And a lot of the IMF guidelines, I mean, the IMF tradi traditionally is senior to the private sector. So, yeah, that's fine if the if Greece is the only sovereign restructuring or sovereign workout voluntary uh, as it may be that happens, well then yes, the private sector won't have to take a hit. But if you have another country that gets into problems and need, needs its debt load alleviated, you're still going to have to go through a process of distributing the losses. And to if the EU is saying that the private sector will have to take no hit whatsoever in any subsequent um, uh, restructuring on a sovereign side, well, that's, that's great news if you're in the private sector. However, given my experience and what I've seen in the past, I think that's highly unlikely. So I'm not sure what was said um, is yeah. necessarily how people are reading it. Okay. Uh, well, Hans, uh, we look forward to checking back in with you as you uh, continue to look at opportunities there. Hans Humes there of Greylock Capital.